So here's those cell stops. So this little area here that's shaded in, that's a area where cell stops would be residing below that 14,600 level, okay, on that 15 minute time frame. So the market dove into that liquidity and you may or may not know that is a buy. You don't need to. You anticipate a shift in market structure. When the market rallies above, when does that happen? On this candle right here, see that little light bulb? That's when you're thinking, okay, now I have a condition in the marketplace that I might see an opportunity intraday. Let's see if there's further evidence to that. Short-term high is taken here. We traded above it. It does not need to close above that. Okay, real important. Once that candle closes and this candle opens, you're going to monitor this candle. And you want to see as soon as this candle closes, does it create that fair value gap? If it creates a fair value gap, again, that's a candle with a high, one single pass up. Next candle has a low that doesn't completely overlap all this. That's a fair value gap, real simple, okay? This candle is where you would look to potentially trade at the earliest because now there's a gap there. The market trades down into that, boom, takes off. Here is insight that everybody needs to understand because they're out here running around on YouTube trying to teach order block theory. Order blocks, okay? I invented it, it's mine. No one talked about it before me. And I first mentioned it in 2010 on baby pips. Prior to that, 1996, I was only teaching it to people one-on-one -on -one in teachings. That's it, okay? You can't find it in books prior to that. It's mine. No one else taught it before me. It is mine. So I'm gonna correct all of you today so that way you can teach your people correctly and not hurt them. See these down close candles? See that? That's all one continuous order block. What's it doing? It's inside that pool of liquidity, sell stops. Where's the open on that? A series of down close candles right here. That's the price level extending out in time. Boom. So inside this fair value gap, this opening price on the order block, that's your buy plus three pips or whatever for spread. And that's what you would use for a limit order. Hmm. That's pretty neat, isn't it? Well, price starts to run where? Above the highs where buy stops would be here, above this high here, and above this high here. Now go back and look at the example where this particular day here, I put in orders and I was still learning how to use the Thinkorswim platform. And there's a little toggle box where if you toggle it, it'll send your order right to the marketplace. It won't let you review it. And I had put that on to see if it was going to show me any kind of information on the screen, but I didn't take it off. So what happened was I put that on and it was actually an order that I mistakenly had in. So I was hoping to see if it could give me an opportunity to get out of it and cover with next to nothing or maybe even squeak out a profit. It wasn't having it. So I had to reverse and then go back and go short, wrote it down. And then you'll see me covering in here and then going long, selling short, reversing, going short, buying long in here inside the order block, rallied up, sold the long, reversed it, bought it here, got out over here and resold for that big run into that. Okay. That's what I was doing. There's people out there are going to tell you he doesn't trade that way. These people don't know how I'm trading. You have no idea how I'm trading. None of you do. Okay. I'm teaching you it, obviously for those individuals that are outside my paid mentorship, which is not open. So please stop emailing and asking people are still sending me emails. Can I join? No, you can't join. Be content with this. I'm teaching you gold and it's costing you nothing but the time to sit down here. And if it doesn't work, you're going to know right away. Okay. I'm not wasting your time. I'm going right into the brass tacks. That way the people that are weak minded will know right away. This is it or it's not that way. You'll know this is too much work for you and that's fine. Go and do whatever you got to do. And I wish you good luck. But the individuals that really put the time in and test what I'm challenge you to look for, you're going to see it's there and it repeats like clockwork. Okay. It's real important. You have that mindset. So the buy stops above here that was taken, this swing low forms once this candle closes. So this candle we're watching, does it go below that short-term low? It does. 
So now we have a shift in market structure that is now bearish, only because we've taken buy stops. Okay. Fair value gap forms, the market rallies up into that. You go short there. What are you looking for? Below here, sell stops. Below here, sell stops. Below here, sell stops. And in this fair value gap here. So if you are in a position that has multiple contracts, or say you have a Forex trade, because this works in Forex too. It's not just limited to futures. Again, I'm just using this asset class because I cut my teeth on these markets. When everybody else was still in elementary school that's trying to teach today, I was trading the S&P. <laughs> I probably sound like a young guy, but I'm actually getting ready to turn 50. So I've been around for a long time, 30 years, this November 5th, 30 years, that's three decades. And the things I'm teaching you, I'm not teaching you one trick pony insight. These things work on all asset classes. Now I'm not gonna co-sign the crypto markets because that only my students are reporting that this stuff works there. I don't even mess around with it that much to know, okay? But you can take partials below here. I really wouldn't do it there, but below here, here. And I know some of you are saying, well, why wouldn't you take them below their ICT? Well, if you're trying to get short here, that's not really that much movement. So if you're going to take something off your trade below that low, why not just try to reach for that one? And you could get it there, right here, okay? And then below that low is nice as well below this low. And this is what I mentioned on the first lesson. Okay. Elements to a trade setup. This is below the 50 level of this high and that low. Okay. So 50% level, that's what we're targeting. Now this candles low was the high end or first objective inside this gap. So that's your target. You're going to look for that. So you're looking for low-hanging fruit, the easiest target to get to. You're not trying to be perfect. And you grow into eventually holding to see if it will fill in that gap. Okay, this fair value gap. In other words, going down to this candle's high. That's something that you strive for over time. If you understand what I just showed you here, that's a very simple process of looking for, number one, liquidity, gauging what happens without having to know for certain, because you don't know, you're not gonna know until the market shows its hand. This is it showing its hand. Okay, 